If moderate or severe turbulence is forecast, then this is clearly displayed on the SIG weather chart by the following symbols. Light turbulence is not explicitly forecast on the SIG weather chart. Turbulence can be experienced either in cloud or in clear air. The latter form is called clear air turbulence or CAT and earlier we saw how this was clearly highlighted on the charts by way of the enclosed dash lines and the CAT legend. In cloud, moderate or severe turbulence is automatically implied on SIG weather charts whenever a CB is forecast. In addition, on the medium level SIG weather charts, areas of moderate and severe turbulence associated with other types of medium level cloud are always highlighted by turbulence symbols. These are included within the cloud boxes assigned to every scalloped cloud area. Moderate or severe icing is also automatically implied whenever CBs are forecast on the charts. In addition, on the medium level SIG weather charts, moderate and severe icing is sometimes explicitly added to scalloped cloud areas when these contain cloud types with an associated icing risk. Widespread sandstorms or dust storms are highlighted on SIG weather charts only when the phenomena are forecast to significantly obscure visibility between the flight levels at which the chart is valid. The symbol which is used on the SIG weather chart is identical for both phenomena and is shown here. As we learnt earlier, the only clouds which are displayed on high-level charts are embedded cumulonimbus. On the medium-level charts, rather more cloud information is displayed. Any cloud types which are likely to have a significant impact on aviation are clearly highlighted. The impact is related to moderate or severe icing and or turbulence. If either or both of these phenomena are forecast, then the flight levels between which they can be expected are clearly displayed in the cloud text box. In our example here, the cloud text box points to two scalloped cloud areas and indicates that broken amounts of cumulus and alt cumulus are forecast within these regions. Between flight levels 250 and XXX, which is less than flight level 100, the lower range of the chart, moderate turbulence can be expected. And between flight levels 250 and 150, moderate icing can be expected. In regions of the world where there is significant convergence of nearly diametrically opposed winds, it's common to have a significant development of cloud. These regions of the world are explicitly highlighted on WAFC SIG weather charts because they are often associated with areas of significant weather and abrupt changes in wind direction. The position which is indicated on the chart is the forecast position of the convergence area at surface level. The Intertropical Convergence Zone, or ITCZ, is always displayed on SIG weather charts which cover the region of the Sub-Saharan Africa. The ITCZ is clearly identifiable by way of two parallel lines and the letters ITCZ. Occasionally, the structure of the troposphere is such that there are several abrupt changes in temperature. In a sense, there are several tropopauses. The tropopause heights, which are included on the high-level WAFC SIG weather charts, are the ones which are most significant to aviation. The heights, which are displayed on the charts, relate to the lowest temperatures in the troposphere. These tropopause heights are indicated at a number of spot locations across each of the high-level charts. Tropopause heights are presented in flight levels, 
and when there is just one tropopause, this flight level is centred in a rectangular box. When several tropopauses are present in the atmosphere, either an H or an L is added to the tropopause box to indicate whether the upper or lower tropopause height is displayed. In these cases, the rectangular box is expanded to include the additional symbol, and the box looks more like an arrowhead pointing up or down. Jet streams are identifiable on the WAF's SIG weather charts by black solid lines, which have wind feathers indicating jet speeds at spot points, and the flight level at which the maximum speed is attained. The arrowhead on the end of each jet stream indicates the direction of movement of the flow. In our example, we have a jet stream which curves in a northeasterly direction, then gradually veers southeasterly. The jet stream reaches a peak speed of 100 knots at flight level 390. Any changes in speed along the jet stream of 20 knots are indicated by either an additional set of wind feathers, or, if there is little space on the chart, two parallel lines perpendicular to the direction of the flow of the jet. It's very common for CAT to be associated with jet streams because of the large amount of vertical and horizontal shear which occurs through the atmosphere near a jet stream. If an erupting volcano is producing enough ash to cause a significant hazard to aviation, then the location of this volcano is clearly highlighted on the SIG weather chart by this symbol. Some additional text is attached to the symbol and includes the name of the erupting volcano and its coordinates. In our example, we are using Mount Etna. Whenever a volcano symbol is displayed on the WAF's chart and it's in the vicinity of your area of operations, then it's important to always check for any SIGMETs, which may be in force. These SIGMETs will provide up-to-date flight information regarding the nature of the ash cloud. In this lesson, we have looked in depth at the different elements of the WAF's SIG weather charts. It's important that you understand them and appreciate that they represent the best fixed time forecaster phenomena which are of interest to aviation. They should become an important element of successful flight planning.